learning how to draw draw box day 23 welcome this is first time here my name's ray also known as two gimps here's a little about me i've always wanted to learn to draw as far back as i can remember i've always wanted to learn but back when i was 15 i was hit by a driver who was drunk and high and i ended up disabled i live in non-stop constant severe pain and i've been unable to leave the house for the past 20 years my current diagnosis is failed back syndrome meaning my spine will continue to deteriorate until the day i end up in a wheelchair Needless to say, learning to draw pretty much fell to the wayside. So this is me trying to learn something I've wanted to learn for my entire life. But more so, I hope not only learn to draw, but to be able to draw something I've wanted to draw for the past 11 years, which is one of my best friends in this world, my dog Nico. My mother bought me Nico five days before she passed away. He is literally the last thing she ever did for me. So that's what I'm going to be doing here, learning to draw and document the entire process. So whether you already know how to draw or you want to learn, I hope you'll consider joining me on this journey. With that, if you want to know more, I will leave a link down in the description down below. I got started, what I'm doing here, all that good fun stuff. Link in the description. With that, going to get going today. We're going to do uh, day one of lesson three. So round ten. Uh, <laughs> we're going to take on lesson three. Uh, before we get going, um, I do want to... Um, Point out though, for those who might be interested, the course I'm currently using is called Draw a Box. You can check the link in the description or at the drawabox.com. Uh, if you're curious, maybe you always want to learn how to draw, uh, maybe you want to dabble, maybe you want to follow along with the videos, for whatever the reason, link in the description or head to drawabox.com. Uh, it's pretty dope. You can go here and learn the drawing fundamentals completely uh, for free if you want. Like I said, which is that big because most places don't teach the fundamentals anymore. And in my extensive research, and I've done a lot over the years, um, looking and hunting and finding desperately, um, they, anybody that does teach their own fundamentals is ridiculously expensive. Uh, so it's pretty dope. You can go here and learn it completely for free. Now, they do have a payment option on their Patreon. You can pick your tier, 20 bucks or less. Um, and you can buy these tokens, submit your tokens, and uh, someone will critique your homework assignments and tell you what you're doing right and wrong. And hopefully help point you in the right direction or you can negate all of that um and just submit your work on their form and do it completely for free which is pretty dope um so yeah link in the description or drawbox.com with that like i said we're gonna get going and then we'll talk a little bit after this before we really start uh with that lesson three yeah buddy applying construction to points let's go Lesson three, applying construction to plants overview. Prerequisites. This marks the beginning of the dy dynamic sketching curriculum. At this point, I assume you've completed both lessons in the basic section, lessons one and lessons two. If you haven't, no matter how good you may be, I strongly recommend you complete them first. All the lessons on this website tackle drawing in a very specific manner with specific techniques that are repeated throughout. These techniques are introduced in the basic section, so if you miss them, you probably won't fully grasp what is explained here. Introduction. To start off, we're going to ease into the subject of drawing rather gently. Each topic will build on the last, gradually working you up. We are also using these different lesson topics to look at the topic of constructional drawing from many different angles. I don't necessarily expect, except that upon completing this lesson, you'll be able to put all of the concepts I mentioned here into practice. Instead, I wish you to finish with a general understanding of what the concepts are on a theoretical level and awareness of what you are doing wrong and a target to aim for the long term. Due to how all of these lessons are structured, you will continue to develop the skills explored here in later lessons. So in the future, you may want to come back to the lessons and attempt the homework again just to see how your skills have improved. Well, one of the most important concepts prior in lesson one is the importance of conveying how a form flows to 3d space things like leaves petals and so on don't have any real solidity or mass to them being as thin and weightless as they are they are entirely subject to the whims of the forces around them wind airflow drag all of these forces are what determine just how a leaf moves through space when tackling anything that relies heavily on leaves think about it like the arrows from lesson two where a box may focus on its solidity in order to feel three-dimensional forms like leaves must emphasize their natural flowing nature sometimes to the point of exaggeration 
more than anything, if you want your lines to flow smoothly, draw them confidently and from the shoulder. Don't hesitate, don't get overly careful and wobbly, just push your lines through and commit to them. Let's see, convey smooth flowing, convey energy and life, stiff, hesitant, jerky, suggest something dead or broken. Okay. Organics. Aside from that flat flowing shape of leaves and petals, aside from the flat flowing shapes of leaves and petals, the majority of your constructions will be done with a variety of organic forms. Organics are essentially combinations of balls and tubes and are what we explore in lesson two. You can and should try to think of these in terms of flow as well, while also trying to convey their solidity and volume. It can be tempting to it can be tempting to cover them with dozens of contour lines. Don't do that. Every mark you put down should be evaluated based on what it's going to contribute to your drawing and how that task can be accomplished best by the stroke. This means drawing a couple of contour lines that do their job effectively rather than many sloppy ones. If you find yourself wanting to put down a bunch, then you're probably doing something wrong. Drawing, drawings and exercises. In the previous section, you were assigned very specific exercises. What we're doing here is not so different. Rather than our focus being to learn how to draw plants, we're using plants as an exercise to learn how to apply constructional techniques to develop your understanding of space. The end result is not our focus as with any other exercise. Its benefit comes from the process we follow, not how pretty the resu resulting drawing is. If you skip steps or ignore certain instructions in favor of achieving a cleaner, more presentable final drawing, you will be missing out on a good deal of what we are doing here. Homework and exercises. Before starting the homework, be sure to go through all the technical exercises and demonstrations included in this lesson. I strongly recommend drawing along with them as well as following them closely when doing so. If you choose to, you can include your attempts at following the demos in your homework, but they should constitute less than half of your plant drawings. As also, also remember that this homework must be drawn from reference. When looking for reference, I recommend you specifically look for those of a higher resolution. Google's image search tool allows you to limit your search to large images, and I recommend you take advantage of this. The homework assignment for this section is as follows. One field page of organic arrows exercise from lesson two, one field page of leaves exercises, one field page of branches exercises. Eight field pages of plant drawings. The first four must have no detail or texture whatsoever, focusing only on construction. The last four can have texture and detail, but you are not required to go past the constructional phase for these either. All the assignment work for this section should be done in ink using fine liner felt tip pens as described here. You may also use a brush pen to fill in dark areas, but do not use, but do not but but not for your line work all right now we all been learned to fight and brought up speed um since lesson one is all like one lesson and there's only like one homework section for the whole entirety of it this is how i'm thinking i'm going to lay out this this set uh, this section um we'll go ahead and tackle organic arrows um uh, and I'll probably reread that part now. Actually, everything else is already pre-recorded because that's how I learn. I, I watch back the videos. Um, and then we'll watch the part on um, the leaves, uh, how to draw leaves, because we have to do one whole page of leaves exercise. Then after that, we'll tackle leaves. Then we'll watch um, the part about uh, how to draw branches, and then we'll tackle branches. And then we're going to do all the demos for um, the plants, and then we'll come back and do the eight plants. Um, it just doesn't make sense to me to read the entire lesson, then come back and have to reread it again. You know what I mean? I've already read it, uh, honestly, probably three or four times now. Um, well, I've watched the video several times. I think at least three times I've seen that draw a leaf video. Um, do you know what I mean? So it just doesn't make sense to me to do it that way. So that's how I'm going to do it, I think. 
Also, as far as the videos, it says they want you to draw along with the demos and exercises. Um, I went back and forth on this. I wasn't sure what to do. Um, so I'm going to play the videos on here. I'm just not going to include the actual video. It's just going to be audio. Um, like I said, I went back and forth. I'm not going to put the video here because I think that's a dick move. I'd be stealing their videos outright at that point. And I'm not, I don't want to do that. And I, like I said, I went back and forth and I figured audio is okay because no one's going to sit here and try to listen just off the audio. I mean, it's ridiculous. You, you know what I mean? You're just wasting your time if you do that. You're far better going and watching the video. You know what I mean? So, um, which I do recommend going and watch the videos because it helps a lot seeing someone attempt to do what you're trying to do. Um, but yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do. So without further did 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 let's, uh, arrows. Yeah, buddy. I'm going to reread this part. Um, cause I think I, uh, it's in, it's in a previous video, but I don't want to be like, Hey, if you want to check out arrows, go check out the other video. You know what I mean? So we'll do it. We can all use a refresher. So, uh, arrows, miss the camera, arrows. <laughs> Start off by drawing a curve on the page. You may want to practice these a bit on their own as well. Try to draw a curve that bends and turns a little. That's curves are generally pretty good. Put yourself in the mindset of drawing a 3D space. Your curve isn't simply sitting on a flat page, it's traveling through the depths of it as well. I draw the same curve a little below it. This can get tricky since it's quite difficult to replicate an identical curve. You may want to build this in segments, but make sure that these flow smooth, smoothly and flow directly into one another. Also to try to consider perspective. The space further towards the back of the end of the arrow is going to be more compressed than the space up front, so all of the distances get a bit smashed. The arrow's width is going to be smaller back there, and even the space between the different lengths of the arrow are going to have less space between them. Now we connect them and add an arrow head at, the front, uh, at one of the ends, fairly straightforward. Finally, add a little bit of shading at the bends and reinforce your overlap with a bit of extra line weight. A good rule of thumb applying line weight at the overlapping point is that the line that crosses on top gets the thicker treatment. To establish its confidence, don't go overboard with this though. Just make it a little bit thicker. Be subtle. This exercise is about familiarizing yourself with three-dimensional space and getting used to plunging into the depths of the scene rather than sticking to just the space defined by the page itself. Mistake, being afraid to let your edges overlap. Sometimes students are a little afraid at first about letting their edges overlap. This is going to make your arrows look very flat and it's part of getting stuck thinking as though you're working in a space defined by the page rather than a three-dimensional world where your arrows are free to twist and turn. Mistake, not applying perspective. While the arrow certainly does not look three-dimensional, does look three-dimensional, it's still pretty limited to the space defined by the page. You need to let it push into perspective and explore the depths of the scene and apply for, for shortening, making the further ends smaller and the closer ends larger. Right, all right, all right. Arrows, here we go. Also, I want to point out, if the videos look choppy, it's because they kind of are. You know what I mean? The way this is all laid out is kind of... You know what I mean? That. Put that as a little arrow there. All right, we got a, a over. Uh, we got a sheet in the.
I guess I'll go with that. I don't know, man. All right. Um. Hard. Your hand falls a fucking paper. It's dropping down to the depths, to the depths of the floor, Captain. Fifty meters. Um. So I think this is a fail here because this is smaller than that there.
try it. It's going to be tough. Um, Alright, let's try to make one go that way. Make our arrow go that way. So let's go...
啊。This is a fail. All right, all right, all right. Now that we done diddy, done diddy, done diddy that. Um, yeah, I think that's good enough. I don't, you know. Um, with that, we're gonna move on to read. Uh, let me pull it up. Nope, wrong page. Here we go. 
Um, all right, let me close that. Go over this. Some, all right, we're going to do lesson three: applying construction to plants. Uh, technical exercise: drawing leaf sizes. Yeah, buddy. Okay, lesson three: applying construction to plants. Technical exercises. While the bulk of the work for the construction of drawing lessons will be focused on drawing from observation, here we are going to ease in with the same exercises focused on specific technical challenges you will face. Drawing leaves. This exercise is all about getting used to drawing leaves and other similar forms. The specific characteristics we are talking about when we are discussing leaves is that they are flat, but they flow through the space. This makes them extremely similar to the arrows exercise in lesson two. The great thing about leaves is that they very much stand as a rep representation of all of the forces that are applied to them. Usually this is a matter of wind or air currents, but there are physical objects that will warp and shift to become a visualization of these forces. As such, I want you to think of these as being more than just static objects with a clear start and end point. Just as you would when doing the arrows exercise, Think of the forces that push through these leaves and draw them with an awareness of how they flow through space. The leaves exercise. The most important part is the center line, the spinal leaf. It can it can't, I can't stress enough how important it is to think about how this line moves through three dimensions, not across a flat page, and to really drive home how it flows. No part of the leaf is more important than this, as it represents the forces that drive the form as it flows through space. I frequently draw this with a little arrow head to remind myself of how confidently it pushes onward. Two, enclose the leaf with simple curves. I don't care how complex the leaf is, capture the core of it, its essence in just two curves. No waves, no jagged edges, no complexity whatsoever. Focus on the flow of the shape and construction it around and construction it around that's and construction and construct it around that center line. Don't treat that line like some kind of suggestion. It is a rule. Build your leaf around it. As always, contour lines help a lot when it comes to being able to picture how the form you're revealing flows through space. They're especially useful when the leaf folds over itself. Unlike the contour curves we dealt with in lesson two, these do not run over a rounded form, so there is no business of making them hook around the edge and wrap them back around. Four, and finally, detail. Don't stress too much over this. It is at, it, it's the absolute least important part of the drawing. A leaf with poor underlying construction cannot be saved no matter how much detail you add. It still feels stiff and lifeless. A strong construction with no detail whatsoever, however, will still look fine. Let's peek the picture. One, remember that these objects may be flat, but they move through 3D space. flat, no amount of detail will fix poor lands. Notice how without detail they still feel like leaves. Full of holes, jagged edges, wavy edges. All complexity on top once the basic solid construction is established. Okay. Uh, mistake. Stiff flow lines. Uh, one common issue I see from students is the tendency to draw leaves, be it as part of this exercise or when using the technique is part of their own drawings, without much consideration for the flow line. This results in leaves that feel stiff and does not flow through 3D space in a convincing manner. Mistake. Not folding natural though. It's pretty easy at first to end up being a little bit nervous about making your leaves twist and turn in three dimensions, but oftentimes that is what is physically demanded. Due to the fact that they don't stretch much, 
Don't be afraid to let your lead pull back over itself. Let the flow line determine your choices. Do not, not your anxiety, not your anxiety in what will and won't look good. Mistake. Skipping constructional steps. Construction is all about moving forward. Simple to complex. Breaking problems down into their most basic components and tackling only one challenge at a time. I often see students who set a leaf with many different arms but who seek to apply the leaf construction method to the whole thing the same way every time rather than thinking about why we employ these steps. It's not that this is the only recipe that is going to work for every single leaf out there. It's not that this is the only recipe that is going to work for every single leaf out there. It's the working around a dedicated line to determine how the form flows through space allows us to pin down that challenge before figuring out how the bounds of the leaf can be determined. If we jump straight into establishing the leaf shape, we have to handle both the flow and the surface area of the leaf simultaneously. Attacking the leaf with multiple arms, you can absolutely start your basic leaf construction, establishing the flow and bounds of your overall shape, and then break internal components down by applying these steps to each individual arm. This will allow you to nail each and every one going. This will allow you to nail how each and every one's going to flow on its own within the context of a large leaf before answering further questions. Mistake zigzagging edge detail. When adding detail like little waves or jagged edges to a leaf, don't do so by applying a single continuous zigzagging stroke. If you remember back mark making lesson one, the third rule is to ensure that each stroke consists only of one trajectory. This is easy to separate when you've got sharp corners, but when you're dealing with more rounded uh, waves as shown here, it may be a little uh, less clear. In general, rise up off the edge from your previous phase of construction and come back down to it and lift your pen and start a new stroke for the next month. Additionally, whenever possible, work additively. Don't cut back into what you've already drawn as this often makes us think more about the flat shape on the page rather than the solid 3D forms they represent. In this case, you'll notice very clearly that along the top edge of the correct example, I've come up off the edge and back down to it. The other side, however, doesn't seem to cut back into the leaf, but if you think about it in three dimensions, it doesn't. Instead, those edges are being lifted up slightly from their previous position rather than being cut into. There will be times when you cannot avoid having to work subtractively, but you should always do your best to see if there is a way to make additive construction work. All right, mistakes. Stiff, no construction for how the leaf, no consideration of how the leaf flows smoothly through space, flows smoothly with a sense of confidence and energy. Leaves aren't flexible enough to achieve this. Bend awkwardly, not willing to let it fold over itself. Oh, I see. Apparently, technique, applying technique mindlessly without thinking about its actual purpose. Subleaf forms can be constructed with the leaf technique too. Sub leaf forms? What does that mean? Give each arm its own flow line coming out of the main flow line and reach out to the simple edge. Construct each arm as a separate leaf form. Merge them together. Zigzagging, ignore underlying simple leaf edges, cutting in and out of the original form. Individual lines for each bump. Working adequately, controlling and designing each bit of edge variation. 
they know I'm unknown simple weave edges cutting in and out of the original form. Alright, alright, alright. Now we're not bad, bring up the speed. Go ahead and tackle the song as I
up. Sorry, I ain't moving my shit. Sorry, dude. Can I just throw that away, buddy? There you go.
I think I did ruin it by doing that.
I just said apparently it wasn't on film because I didn't know the stupid thing shut up. Um, notes I would make to my future self if possible, like I did to myself, but if I could go back. If your pen starts fucking up or it's broke, don't don't push it like I did. Because what happens is, is this happens. Um, it ruined them, in my opinion. They're, they weren't great to begin with, but... It fucked it up even more. Because um, you have to push harder to get a solid line. And it doesn't come out. Then you have to go over it again. And then it, it, it just it just fucked it up. So that's why I put this here to remind myself. Um, shading killed it. Shading killed it. Note to self, get new pen instead of pushing old one. 
Um, this is to, to, to it fucked it up immensely, immensely. Like this one was terrible. This one was kind of bad. This one's fucking horrible. Um, I don't know why this turned out like this. So I wrote a note. Why does this look wrong? Because they all look rough. Like the jagged edges don't look jagged to me. I don't know, man. They look weird. You know what I mean? Um, a lot of these textures I took offline because I didn't know what the fuck to put in them. I didn't want to just put straight lines on all of them. Um, so a lot of them are from leaves that don't even fit the type of fucking leaf it is. Um, I think that one turned out okay. I think this one turned out pretty cool. Um, I like them, but I... Uh, this one looks like a lettuce leaf. Um... It's not bad. It's it's not great. Um, and also note to self, uh, what I put here too, Sharpies like to bleed. So you get these black like fucking dots all over the page. Like the second you touch it down, it's a, you can't hesitate with this with these fine liners, these Sharpie fine liners, at least not this one. I don't know if they're all like this. Um, this was from the dollar store. But, like, the second this thing touches the fucking paper, it just shits ink right there. Just right there. A fucking blob of black ink. Like, yeah, you see it? And it happened here. It happened here. It happened here. Here. Everywhere. The second it touched, if you didn't go, which was hard for me because I was nervous and anxious. Because, like I said, I'm, I'm not, I had trouble seeing that third line on these ones. Um, I can do two perfectly fine, but three, I have a hard time seeing it. So I would set it down and try to see it, and the moment I did that, so you had to, like, just fucking go, which I guess was a good thing for me, so I didn't punch about too much, but, yeah, just some notes to myself, my rules, not a test, no resetting, um, no resetting slash doing, um, screw beauty, just draw. That's what I said to myself. And then I finished. I said, hell yeah. You did okay, Ray. Because I'm proud of myself. We finished this motherfucker. Um, this took me three days to do this. I'm not even kidding. Three fucking days to do this. Look at that. Look how deep that fucking Sharpie is. That's not even pushing hard. I was light. I mean, I'm naturally heavy-handed. Like, I, I try, but it's super hard for me. Like, I just am. Um, but look at that. Fuck me, man. Look at blood through a paper. Blood through two pieces of paper. But yeah, I'm proud of myself. I did it. Um, I'm going to keep at those because I... I, I didn't I didn't do good with it so um I wish I could grab that paper but it's on the floor. I'd rather use the scrap paper than anything else. Um See, look how light that is. Like here in comparison. See, this thing's done. Look at that, fucking blobs.
thick that is. Look at that. I barely touched that fucking paper. Bro. Bro. Mm. Wrong for wasn't fucking obvious, it is now. Yeah, we're definitely gonna have to use a, a, a different pen tomorrow. this and then we'll uh, start reading the demos and watching the videos of the plants and then we'll, we'll watch all of them and then we'll go back and do the plants that's what I'm gonna do The only reason I'm even doing this this way, in truth, is because I'm more I, I, I'm more comfortable doing it like that. But um, I know there's going to come a point in the future where there's going to be a line that's too long. Um, so, hence the reason I want to they practice it now. Um, Cause I could just do it like that, right? But I don't want to do that. Cause like I said, there's gonna come a point in the future where well, we're gonna have to do something.
like that. Hmm? A little, little mushroom, maybe? So far, the biggest tip I can tell you, if you're having trouble seeing the lines, the three lines like me, just follow that center line. It's hard because at times it doesn't make sense. Like, you know what I mean? Like for me to go like this, I'd have to turn and then it wants to go like that, but it doesn't, it goes like, like that. I practice your arrows, but instead of doing your arrow, is this is what I did, was I figured I could understand here. So I went back here to this point. I was like, okay, well, I'm understanding this. What the fuck is going on? The only thing I could figure is this is too much clutter for my brain. My brain, I do not like clutter. I do not like mess. I do not like chaos. I like order. I, I, I like logic. I like reason. I like I like shit clean. I, everything has its fucking place. You know what I mean? I'm not anal about it, but I prefer it. You know what I mean? But, like, you know, I'm not drawing outlines around fucking spoons and be like, bro, it's outside the outline. What's the problem, bro? <laughs> you know what I mean? But, um, I don't know, in all seriousness, I wonder if that's what it is. Or, I don't know, maybe it's the lack of, uh, I, I, I fucking suck and can't do it. I don't know. I don't know. I don't think this, this, oh. I don't know. I don't know. And it's not that I have to get it or, you know, it's like, you know, I, I can't fail. Oh, fuck that. I fail all the time. It's just, it's so frustrating. Like, the best way for me to describe it is, like, if you can draw a straight line, right, and then all of a sudden, like, you can draw a bunch of straight lines, and then all of a sudden it's like that, and it's like, what the fuck? What the fuck, man? Like, what? what? You, you know you can do it, but you can't do it. So it's so infuriating because you know you can do it. Do you know what I mean? So it makes it just that much more frustrating. You know? And so knowing I can do this, but when you add a third on in, it's like, what? And the problem is I've done it so many times now, I know what these lines are supposed to do. The best method is to cut through those intersections with it. So like, then, you know, we'll start here and then wrap in there and then there like that. That's the cleanest path to get to get that so it doesn't get all like this. All thin and shit. That's the cleanest path. And I know that, so I want to do that. But I don't want to do that because I'm, it's like I'm, I'm relying on that instead of seeing it. You know what I mean? So instead, I'm not just aiming for those spots. I'm trying to follow this line. Because I can't. I can't see this like this right now. If I if I lay down those lines, right? Uh, like that, like that. I can see this ribbon now, 3D. I can see it because those help me. 
but without them, it's just a line to me. I don't, it's not like, you know what I mean? I'm looking down on like some fucking, like, like line. Do you know what I mean? It's not, I don't, it's not like I see something like that. I don't see some three dimensional thing. It's a fucking line to me. And I don't know, I don't know. Maybe that's a problem. I don't know. But right now, that's a line. Now it's three dimensional. It's the same thing with like this. Like I'm starting to see this more three dimensional now. Um, you know, I'm not there yet. But if I go like this, now all of a sudden it's it's, it's a solid thing. It's like uh, no, no. It's like this, right? That's just a puddle, right? It was just a fucking flat puddle. But right now it's a three dimensional. I don't even have to add that middle one, but just these guys are enough. You know what I mean? Like they're 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 enough to see it. It makes it three dimensional. I don't see some three dimensional thing here. Like now I am a little bit. You know, um, but um, doing stuff like that helps. You know, to make it you know give it depth you know what i mean but do that to me is just a straight line if i do that you can see the path underneath of it right i don't i, I don't i don't have the you see but I can't do that with three of them. And the way I figure it is this. One has to go forward, one has to go back. Like that. So. It's not even that. It's they each have their own side. That's on that side, but I can't see the other side of this. I can't see it. See, I can't, I can't see it. that and this has got a side like that if I I can only pick one side I can't see the other side
See, like that. Why'd that go to shit? I followed the line. Why does it do that? See, I'm pulling this line right now. And if I go around like that, like that's going around, and I go up there like that, why doesn't that work? But if I follow the stupid points, oh, that works. See, is it, is it, is it, it does, I'm like, maybe, maybe it does work, but it just looks bad to me because it's so smushed together. Check that, that, that doesn't, but it follows them. the same line. I stuck this out though. Like when I quit yesterday, not quit yesterday. That's another thing too. Like when you get frustrated as much as I did, I kept going and it just made it worse and worse. Um, and I only stopped because I ran out of time. Um, I just walk away. Just walk away. Like I know it sucks to do that, especially because you want to learn. Yeah, you know, or, or you know, maybe in a hurry to move forward, whatever. But I, it's just for the best. When you're that frustrated, you're not gonna, you're not gonna do good. 
It's only going to get worse, and that's exactly what happened to me. With that, it's better spend a dice. I will see you probably tomorrow. Depending upon if this video is already long enough, or too long, maybe. Either way, see you tomorrow. Okay, bye! We did it. Yeah, buddy!